Welcome back into Sports Drive. Once again, I'm your host, Preston Moore. Joining me now uh, as my last guest of the day is Coach Hayden Hart from Pringle Morse, uh, the head coach of the Pringle Morse Cougars. Uh, coach Hart, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, I just t had one of our other sports reporters on. We were talking a little bit about the wind and how we're trying to trying to make it through. These last couple days have been pretty windy in the panhandle. Um, yeah, it has. She, and you... So you, speaking of the wind, let's just jump right into it. You are from uh, Pringle Morse. You went to Pringle Morse growing up. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, from pre-K all the way through eighth grade. Yeah. Well, that's a really cool story. I mean, you grew up in Pringle Morse, and I want to hear a little bit more about your story. Obviously, uh, you, you left, went to college and all that, uh, but then you came back. And now, uh, this year, you are starting a program up from scratch, your first district season at Pringle Morris, coaching both the boys and the girls basketball teams. What's that like? And what does it mean to you to do it where you grew up as well? Uh, it's, it's been a lot, you know, it's a, it's been a challenge with, with both teams, but it's been a, a fun challenge. We've got a great group of kids and, mm -hmm. and they're definitely worth all the time that we put in. And as far as being at the school where I went to school, it's just great to kind of build it up. You know, we had to start a high school here recently, and we said, if we're going to start one, why not, you know, let's make it legit. Let's do it the right way. Let's get everything that these kids would want. And so I think that's the thing that's meant the most to me is that we've been able to kind of build this school and kind of make a name for ourselves. Yeah, and, you know, that's a uh, – it's interesting to me because you guys didn't have a high school uh, for a while there. You didn't have a high school, I believe, whenever I was – uh, living here because I in middle school when I played basketball we actually played against Pringle Morse uh, a few times so I remember uh, traveling down there and playing in that gym uh, back way when I don't even know it was probably 10 11 years ago but um, oh, okay. but that being said uh, you didn't have a high school whenever you were there at Pringle Morse so is it interesting is it is it special to you to give these kids an opportunity to play basketball in at the high school level um, an opportunity that you didn't have when you were uh, growing up in Pringle Morris. Uh, it is. That that does mean a lot. It's pretty special. You know, that's something. Had we had a high school here when I was in eighth grade, but I bet most of us would have stayed, mm -hmm. you know, and probably tried to, you know, continue being successful. Uh, and so it does mean a lot that we're able to give these kids something that I wasn't able to experience. Um, and, yeah, hopefully we can just continue to progress with it and make it worth it for the kids that have stayed, you know, because yeah. it really wasn't a very easy choice for them either. Yeah, well, you, you coach both basketball teams. That in and of itself is already something that most coaches around this area don't have to, to take on all at once. On top of that, uh, you're teaching math classes as well at school. How do you balance all of that at once? And what was it like, especially this season specifically, uh, being that it was the first district season to do all of these things all at once. Uh, as far as the teaching goes, I just try and stay on top of what I'm supposed to be doing. I have five different preps. I teach seventh grade all the way through geometry, so five different math classes. And I just try and stay on top of those to make sure I'm doing my job on the school end. And then uh, for the basketball aspect, you know, I just we put a lot of time in after school and during the athletic period and, and working with those kids and then, just try and balance that and balance a little bit of home life, make sure I give my kids some time, give my wife some time. But, uh, you know, like I said earlier, it's a great group of kids. So it makes it really easy to be away from home a lot and be traveling with them because they are, they're just a great group, boys and girls, both. Tell me how you saw both teams, the girls team and the boys team. Tell me how you saw them grow and change over the season. This being the very first time that they had a district schedule to play. Uh, you know, consistency is something we struggled with. Our our girls team started off the season well. We had a winning record at, at one point, and I guess they, you know, things looked a little easier than we probably thought they should have been, but then it started to catch up. You know, teams started to kind of figure out who we were and who our main players were and kind of shut that down a little bit. Uh, and then during that tournament season in early December, we kind of hit a wall with both teams. You know, a lot of tough games, a lot of hard losses, uh, I'm sure it made some of them question, you know, if this was the right choice or not. But we we persevered, we pushed through, and then we were able to see some success in district. Uh, we were able to both uh, make playoffs as uh, first-year teams, and I think that was something that well, was really special to both teams. 
Yeah, absolutely. To make playoffs, you know, in your first year, I think that that's uh, an accomplishment in and of itself. But looking forward at the future, you know, what do you think are some goals that you have for both teams going forward uh, into the next couple of years now that you have one season under your belt? Well, uh, yeah, like we said, we were, we were excited for this year. That was a goal of theirs to make playoffs. Both teams uh, wrote that on a poster to start the season. We want to make playoffs. We know we may not have a lot of wins on the season, but that's something we want to accomplish. And uh, now that we've done that, you know, I, you know, told them it was a great job. We both teams got to face Nazareth in the first round, which, you know, was lucky for us, I guess. But <laughs> we got one of the top teams in the state there. Wow. But uh, so goals for next year, we've already talked about it. If you want to avoid playing Nazareth, you need to try and bump yourself up in the district standings a little bit. We have to improve. We have to get better and try and knock out another team uh, in our district to sneak one of those third or second spots maybe. And, of course, with the boys, we know it's going to be a tough order with Tech's line in our district as well, and Wilderado boys are also pretty solid. And the girls, maybe we might be able to push a little easier with them, we're hoping. But the main thing I've told the kids is we've got to put in the work to get there. We can't just be happy with we made playoffs this year and then continue to do that year after year. Uh, it won't be as special anymore if we just make playoffs. We want to try and push ourselves to go higher in district and maybe even bring home a gold basketball next year if we can win a playoff game. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, facing off against Nazareth, uh, on both sides is certainly a challenge in your very first year. That's, I mean, you're thrown right into the lion's den, I feel like, because Nazareth is known as one of the better teams in the state of Texas at that level. So what was it like? Do you think it gave uh, your teams a little bit of experience to play against a team as good as Nazareth and going into next season? Do you think that it's going to be, you know, having a game like that under your belt? You mentioned this is fuel for the future, you know, do better mm -hmm. next year and you won't have to play Nazareth first round. You know, I mean, that, that is the, that's how you fuel your team going into this next season. Do you think that they are inspired now uh, to go into next season to play, you know, uh, to play at a level to where once you hit the playoffs, it's going to be a little bit of an easier road and you don't necessarily get thrown straight uh, <laughs> into a game against Nazareth first round. Uh, I do think that they will uh, have some fuel to avoid Nazareth. You know, it was it was good. I saw some emotion from both of my teams. You know, we had some tears and stuff, uh, just feeling that loss. But I was glad we got to that moment to experience a playoff game. You know, I, I built it up for them all year about you know it's a different it's a different game. It's not like a district game. It's not like a regular season game. It it means a little more. Yeah, and some of them definitely felt that they got to experience that and you know i had quite a few kids on both teams come back and just say hey i, I want to get a gold ball next year right. you know i want to get to work and mm -hmm. and i want to win a game next year and feel that and so i think that was good and that was that was definitely something positive to take away from that playoff experience yeah absolutely well uh coach hart thank you for joining once again and congrats on a successful first season making the playoffs and the future's bright at Pringle Morse uh, and congrats again on not only a first season but on taking on as much as you do especially in your hometown um, I think it's very admirable so I, I respect you a lot for that so congrats again on that great first season All right. thank you I appreciate it of course we'll stick around right after the break we'll be right back with more sports drive <laughs> 